بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله We continue with the uh, سورة الانفطار uh, After Allah عز وجل established <coughs> the fact that he is the creator and he is the one in control uh, in order to instill in the heart of people that they are his slaves. Allah Azza wa Jalla in the following verses uncovers the reason behind the deception of mankind when he said ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal karim o my kind what has deceived you concerning your lord the gracious allah azza wa jal uh, uncovers the fact that despite them knowing and realizing that he is the creator they admit to his lordship subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the reason behind that is that they are denying resurrection. And then Allah Azza wa Jal strongly confirms that this uh, day will happen, the day of resurrection, and that people will get their recompense, each according to his deeds. Allah says, Kalla bal No, but you deny the recompense. Another meaning for a deen is the religion. Kalla is usually uh, used in the Arabic language uh, to negate something that uh, was said before it. So what is being negated here is, uh, or are the lies that were said against the religion. The lie that there will be no resurrection. The lie that no one is going to be held to account. Allah Azza wa Jal is negating that and saying, no, none of that is true. Right? So it is impossible for any sound minded person to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal has created man and proportioned him and balanced him in such a manner for no reason. It is impossible for a sound minded person to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal created this universe with all that it includes for no purpose. And yet the disbelievers of Quraysh denied that and claimed false lies against uh, the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's as if Allah Azza wa Jal is telling these people that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who created you the way He wanted. He fashioned you the way He willed. You had no control over your height, your color, your gender, nothing. All of that was His choice. All of that was His will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you had no control over that. Allah Azza wa Jal favored you over animals. He created you human beings. And despite all of that, you still deny and belie the message. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا تَفْهَمُونَ And indeed, appointed over you are keepers, noble and recording. They know whatever you do. Now, you lie, although there are angels with these descriptions. They're keepers, they're noble, they don't leave anything out and they do they know whatever you uh, do now the the word kiraman noble uh, is an indication if you remember when we spoke about the description of jibril he was also given that description and nobility goes against lying uh, or forging something. So Allah Azza wa Jal is given this description again to the uh, 
keepers of the records to indicate that these angels write exactly and precisely what they see and hear. And they're going to write everything. They're going to write everything you do, everything you say. Whether that is haram or halal or simply permitted, mubah, everything will be recorded. Nothing will be left out from that record. Another thing in, in the use of the word noble or kareem or kiram, uh, if you know, if you're sitting somewhere and you know that a person with a noble status is watching what you're doing, you f you'll feel ashamed doing something wrong. Right? It, you'll think once, twice, thrice before you actually do something wrong because you have that sense of, oh, I am being watched by someone who's noble. It's just not anyone. It's, no, it's a noble person. And, and that feeling uh, is a deterrent against someone committing sin or doing something wrong. Uh, another thing that some of the people of knowledge uh, stated is that when you're feeling watched all the time, and this is uh, something that we ought to remind ourselves with, we're being watched by Allah Azza wa Jal, and we're being watched and monitored by those who keep records. You know, why do people come when they come to a speed radar, they come and shh, they slow down. Why? Because they know they're being watched, right? They, so they will slow down out of fear of being caught doing something wrong. Well, there's a consequence of being caught doing this particular thing wrong. You're going to be paying a fine, right? Uh, it depends on how fast you, you might be, your uh, license might be confiscated, whatever. But there is a consequence to that. If we think about how watchful Allah Azza wa Jal over us is, and that how these keepers are also watching and keeping a very precise and accurate record of everything that we say and do. Uh, I believe many of the mistakes and sins we commit uh, will not be committed. Then Allah Azza wa Jal goes to say, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ Now, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the beginning the, uh, astaghfirullah, Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning in the beginning the abrar, the pious. Indeed, the righteous or the pious will be in bliss. Notice in the Quran, you'll find this a lot. Allah mentions those who do good and then those who do evil or backwards. Uh, mentions reward and punishment or punishment and reward. He gives you hope and then he scares you. This is to create a balance in us. So we cannot go on in life only feeding Allah and despair of his mercy and hope in him. Right? Because this is forbidden, this is haram, to lose hope in Allah Azza wa And on the other hand, we cannot go leading a life that's full of hope, not feeding Allah Azza wa and His punishment. That will make us feel that everything is okay and I can do anything. Allah is merciful, I have good hope in Allah Azza wa I trust Allah will not punish me, so I'll do everything. That's why Allah Azza wa created this uh, sense of balance. He proportioned mankind in all aspects, not just his physical appearance, also in his personality and character. <laughs> the, the word inna in Arabic is used to confirm something. And the lam in uh, the word la fi, it's la fi, fi is in, is indeed in. So it's Twice confirmation. Twice the confirmation that those who act righteously, 
those who are pious, will uh, be leading a blissful uh, life in, in the hereafter. Uh, and that's a fair recompense of their faith, belief, action upon their faith and belief uh, in this dunya. And the, the word abrar or bir uh, is not just uh, a description given to any person who does one or two good things. Uh, it's a person whose actions are continuously righteous to the extent that he is known to people as such. So he's described as such. Right? So it's not just someone who's doing one or two things. No, this is how he leads his life. His life is described as piety and righteousness. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ will be in bliss. One thing that we need to remember is that bliss starts here. It's not only there. Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا The one who does righteousness or righteous deeds, male or female, while a believer, we will make him lead a blissful life, a good life. So, bliss is something that you start enjoying here as a result of your faith and your action upon your faith. And then indeed, the fair and just reward for those who led their lives as such will be the eternal bliss in Jannah. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارَ لَفِي جحيم. Again, inna and la is to confirm that indeed the wicked will be in hellfire. Again, this miserable life in the hereafter is something that they will be li living in this world before they actually reach there. Just like Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned that blissful life for those who are pious and believe, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى who, He who shuns, who stays away, who turns away from my remembrance will lead a tight, miserable life, a gloomy life. He can be a multi-billionaire, but away from Allah, you will find no joy in anything. Nothing will make you happy inside you might look happy you might look someone who is important who is rich you have you have cars and real estate and companies and but your heart from the inside is miserable you take pills to go to sleep while a person who leads a blissful pious life enjoys a deep night's sleep why? Because he is with Allah and the other one is with the devil. Uh, Imam Abu Hazm al Madani was asked by Sulaiman ibn Abdul Malik, who was the ruler at the time. He said, What will we have with Allah? What's the recompense with Allah? He said, Weigh your deeds in the balance of the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla, and you'll know what you will get. You want to know how, you, how things are going to be? Put your, your deeds on the scale of the Qur'an and you'll know. 
So Sulaiman said, where will I find this? Where can I find this, what you're saying in the book of Allah Azza wa Abu Hazim said, Inna al-awrara lafi na'im wa inna al-fujjara lafi jahim. So you weigh your deeds. Which one of the two are you? Which describes you? So Sulaiman said, so where is the mercy of Allah? He said, Qareebun min al muhsineen It's near from those who are muhsineen Ihsan. Ihsan is a, is a high rank in the narration uh, in which Jibreel came to teach the companions their religion, the known famous long narration. He asked Prophet, the Prophet وسلم, of Iman and he gave them the pillars of Iman. He asked him about Islam, he gave him the pillars. Of, and then he asked him about Ihsan. He said, it is a state when you worship Allah as if you see him. Because though you don't see him, he sees you. When we worship Allah Azza wa Jal in this manner, our acts of worship will be very close to perfection. But the problem is that we always forget that Allah is watchful. Allah is overseeing us. We forget that. And this heedlessness is what make, makes us slip and divert and err and sin. يَصْلَوْنَهَا يَوْمَ الدِّينَ وَمَا هُمْ عَنْهَا بِغَائِبِينَ Now this is after saying that the wicked will be in hellfire. They will enter to burn therein on the day of recompense and never uh, therefrom will they be absent. They will enter to burn. This is the fear recompense for disbelief or disobedience. And then Allah Azza wa Jal confirms that they will be punished, but not only punished, they will never be absent from it. In other words, the punishment is something that is continuous. And this is a, a really horrifying, petrifying thing to think of, that I'll be, astaghfirullah, not me, Someone will be punished, and punishment will never be absent, meaning it will never cease, it will never end. To the point that the people of hell, وَنَادَوْ يَا مَالِكُ لِيَقْضِ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ They will call Malik and say, let your Lord put our lives to end. قَالَ إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ You are going to eternally stay. So punishment won't cease, won't stop. See, in this life, justice is not established. And that's why there has to be a day when justice is fully applied to people. If someone was to kill a person, we would kill him as a penal law in, in Islam. If, you, if someone kills another person without due right, he's to be killed as a punishment, right? What if someone kills a hundred people? What if he kills a thousand people? What's gonna happen? He's gonna be killed. So killing one and killing a thousand has the same punishment. And that's not fair. And that's why justice is not complete on earth and it will be perfect on the day of judgment. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ ثُمَّ مَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ And what can make you know what the day of recompense is then what can make you know what the day of recompense is? Now, the issue of denial and belying revolved around 
the day of judgment and the day of recompense and resurrection and all that. Allah Azza wa Jal goes back in this position to reconfirm that issue and mentions it to establish that it is something that uh, will take place. And he repeats it in two consecutive verses to magnify the importance of this event and to increase the, the fear in the hearts of those who deny or those who are heedless from the believers. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ What makes you think that you know? Meaning it is something that's beyond your perception. What's going to take place is something beyond your imagination. It is so terrifying that you can't even imagine. Again, this is to instill fear. And repeating this is to instill fear because sometimes logic doesn't work with people. Concrete evidence doesn't work with some people. The only thing that works with a certain type of people is to scare them. Some people are not going to change unless you scare them. If you scare someone by telling him that if you, if you steal, we'll put you in jail for a day or half a day and then get you out, bail you out for a thousand dollars, five hundred, whatever, right? Okay, he might be reluctant. But if you tell that man, Islam says that under certain conditions and theft, this is going to be chopped off. Trust me, he'll think a lot before he attempts to steal something. Why? It is fear. A tangible fear. And Allah Azza wa here is telling them this is way beyond anything tangible that you can think of. It is much more terrifying and petrifying that you, that you cannot perceive. And this is to, again, instill that fear in them. Perhaps their hearts would move and they would give up their arrogance and denial and accept uh, the message. يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا it is the day when a soul will not possess for another soul power to do a thing and the command that day is entirely with Allah. When someone is faced with this statement, he feels paralyzed. He feels total control of the person addressing him over the event and over the people in that event. It is something that imposes on him that you are a slave and I am the Lord, I am in control, I was in control and I will continue to be in control and you will face that the consequence of your denial on that uh, day. No one will be able to rescue you, no one will benefit you. The control is all in the hand of Allah. Authority and power are in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. Just like He was the only creator in this life, He will be the only one who has power and control and judgment on that day. This concludes Surah Al-Infitar. And with this we'll conclude this session. Insha'Allah, subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu